All right, so you may have seen a variant of this or this diagram exactly. Um, I'm going to go in detail about what this diagram actually is. Uh, so starting with the basics, uh, we do have the left and the right eye, and within each eye, you're going to have a bisected. Uh, so you're going to have the left side, which is going to be on this side of the eyeball, and the right side on that side. Um, and that's for both eyes. Uh, we have the optic chiasm here, which is going to be an X. That's going to be in your brain, uh, right in front of your pituitary gland. Um, so if your pituitary would be right here. And then finally, um, we've got the lateral geniculate nucleus, and that is going to be part of uh, the visual field for your brain. Okay, so now we've got the basics, eye, optic chiasm, then its final endpoint, and we'll get to that in depth a little bit later. So each eye is divided uh, into the left and the right side, which I already said. It's color-coded, so that way the left side of the eye is always going to be the red, and that's going to send information to the left side of the brain. And then the right side of the eye is going to both be in green. Uh, the left side is going to send its projections across the optic chiasm uh, to the lateral geniculate nucleus on the right side. So um, why did we actually color code it this way? Um, it all is based upon where you're looking. So in a normal person, if I shine light directly at them, it's going to activate all fibers. So it's going to activate the right part of the right eye, the left part of the right eye, the right part of the left eye, and the left part of the left eye. So if I shine a light in front, um, it's going to activate all of these fibers. Um, the brain is going to pick up that the object is in front. Next, I'm going to <coughs> add light from this side. So off in the distance on the right side, I'm shining a light that's going to affect. Again, this is not right next to the eyeball. This is going to be off in the distance, but it's going to be on the patient's right side. What that's going to do is it's going to send light into the eyeball and just stimulate this right side. Likewise, it's just going to stimulate the right side of this eyeball as well. So, or the left side, sorry. It's going to be a right light source that's going to activate the left side of the right eyeball and the left side of the left eyeball. Um, that's going to be sent to the brain. Note that these fibers do not cross and note that these fibers do cross. Um, so that way, light from the right side is going to be transmitted to the left side um, of the brain. Likewise, you could have, let me get this out of the way. You could have a light source that's going to be over here on the left. It's going to be shining its light or an object, whatever you want. I like light because it makes it simple. Light is going to come in activate this, which is going to be the right side of the left eye, and it's also going to be coming in, activating only the right side of the right eye. <coughs> Note that uh, these left fibers are going to cross over, and these fibers on the right side will not. Uh, this is important because it helps your brain organize where the light is coming from. And that's ultimately why you have this optic chiasm with crossing over and some fibers that don't. Um, it's because you want to localize that light source. So if your light source is over here on the left side, only, um, only this side of the eye will pick it up. It's going to send that information to the opposite side of the brain. So that way, stuff that's receiving the light is then ultimately paired together. While stuff that is not receiving that light, which is going to be red, is ultimately not, is going to be grouped together as well. So we have the group that is seeing the light, that isn't seeing the light. But that's going to be why we actually have this crossover, not crossover combination. So um, you notice that this is a pretty complex system. So when something goes wrong, um, there's going to be a lot of different possibilities of what can it can produce. So we'll go over that now. 
we just covered the basics of this. Now we're going to go into the pathology. So what actually happens when you make cuts? Um, this gets a little difficult, so I'm going to go through each one of these very slowly. So to begin, we've got a light source that's coming in, uh, looking straight ahead. It's going to cover all eye fields, so both sides of each eye are going to be stimulated. So what happens if there's a lesion or a cut, a nick, a tumor, anything that's going to cut right there? So we're in the left eye. Um, we're going to cut between the optic nerve where it exits the eye and before it enters the optic chiasm. So the optic nerve being cut here is going to cut off all sensory information that is coming from either side. So our eye is going to be black. So over here, the whole eye is going to be black. Since we just cut the left side, um, the right side is going to be unaffected. This is going to be total blindness in your left eye only. Your right eye is perfectly fine. So complete neck blindness was actually pretty easy to go over. Next, we're going to have to go over something a little more slowly. So we have light that comes in, entering all eye fields. Let's say that there is an object only here in the middle. Your eyes are going to realize from their outside things that that object is there. And likewise, the lateral vision field is going to pick this up. This red part and this green part, the medial fields, will not actually see that image. It's going to be these lateral sides. So what happens if there's a cut in the eye here and here. Um, so within the optic chiasm, just the sides that are uh, going to be laterally not crossing over. The sides that cross over are going to be in the middle, while the sides that stay on the same side um, are going to be laterally. So we have two lateral cuts to the eye, theoretically. How is this going to present to the patient? What are they actually able to see? So the first one, total blindness, they cannot see out of their left eye. Easy concept. Now we're going to go into a different field. So if our object is midline medially, our lateral eye fields are going to pick it up. Um, so our lateral eye fields are now cut. So what can the patient actually see? Well, we're from the patient's point of view. We're not actually into their brain. We can only base our diagnosis on what the patient tells us. So since they cannot see medially because their lateral tracks have been cut, which pick up that medial object, they're going to be blind halfway through each eye. And I'll actually shade in. They'll be medially blind. So where I'm shading is where they cannot see. They'll be able to see. Uh, in both eyes, lateral stuff, because these medial tracks will pick up lateral light coming in, but this medial object is going to bounce to the outside of their eye, and that outside of the eye was cut, which will produce this binasal heteronymous hemianopia. So bilateral meaning it's both sides, heteronymous meaning it's going to be not the same side on each. So on the left eye, it's going to be the right portion. While on the right eye, it's going to be the left portion, meaning it's different portions of each eye. And then hemianopsia is going to be the um, only seeing uh, half. The hemi meaning half, an meaning without, and opsia meaning the eye. One thing I forgot to cover is what can cause a total left eye blindness or this binasal heteronymous uh, enough. Yeah. Um, so within our optic chiasm, and then our left eye, we made the lesion. So somewhere between these two. What can actually cause that? That's going to be uh, MS. So multiple sclerosis is going to be causing this lesion most likely. Um, what can cause these lateral uh, lesions? Well, it would be a bilateral ICA uh, infarct. Bilateral ICA infarct. All right, 
So um, we've got MS causing this first example, bilateral ICA infarct causing the second example, and we'll go on to more pathologies. Okay, so we just went over a lesion of the optic nerve and of the lateral tract of the optic chiasm. Now let's introduce some more lesions. So um, what happens if we took a knife, had a tumor, uh, whatever it is, had a lesion in the middle of the optic chiasm? What would occur? So same scenario, we've got light coming in from all directions, so the patient um, should be able to see everything. Um, but now we're actually cutting this tract. Cutting this tract is going to cut the medial, and the medial here, um, receptors. These medial receptors are going to pick up stuff that's occurring in the lateral visions. So an, an object over here is going to pick up by the medial side, and likewise over here, the medial aspect is going to pick up that lateral object. Um, we're going to cut these two tracts so nothing can go down. So what kind of presentation is this going to be? So again, we're going to bisect each eye. So it's going to be affecting both eyes, and they cannot see laterally. So now, on the right eye it's lateral, and on the left eye it's lateral. This is exactly opposite as that one that we just covered. So while the last one was bi-nasal heteronymous hemianopia, um, this one is going to be bitemporal uh, heteronymous hemianopia. So um, it's important for the terminology. The last one, their blindness was bi-nasally. Now their blindness is bitemporally. They cannot see uh, the lateral objects, but they can see these medial objects. Medial objects are going to be picked up by lateral receptors, which um, is going to present with uh, what we see here if we lesion right there. So that is going to be um, one pathology. Our next pathology is going to be cutting, let's see, just clear the board a little. It's going to be cutting the optic tract. So the portion from the eye to the optic chiasm is going to be called the optic nerve. The optic tract is going to be the uh, um, portion between the optic chiasm and its end location um, deep within the brain. So let's make a lesion on, let's just say, this right side to the uh, optic tract. And I'm actually going to switch markers now, all lesions and blindness. Everything that was black is now going to be blue. Um, so what is actually happening? So let's take a look. We're cutting both fibers, both green fibers. So this green fiber is going to pick up objects that are going to be coming in, uh, affecting this part. We cannot see stuff that's affecting this green over here. Likewise, we can't see stuff that's affecting this green over here, which means that they have a blindness to objects that are located on this left side. So, let me bisect. What kind of blindness are we going to be seeing? So we know that we cannot see objects on our left side. So the patient is going to present with blindness in their left side. It's going to be on the same side. So uh, it's important to note that um, we cannot see on this left side in both eyes. So how do we name that? We name it left homoanomalous uh, hemianopsia. So it's um, going to be left, because it's left side blindness, of course, because we can't see that left side object. It's going to be homonomous uh, instead of hemi, homo, so it's going to be the same side on both, both eyes. And it's going to be a hemianoptia, because only half of the eye is, is uh, actually able to see. The other side is going to be blind. So it's going to be a, a right side tract lesion, but it's going to present with left side blindness. That's an important point to make. Okay, so we just covered uh, tract lesions, nerve lesions, optic chiasm lesions. Now let's get in, down into the uh, receptor part of the brain. So brain lesions. Um, if 
got our lateral geniculate nucleus, and you've got two different tracts. You've got the cuneus tract and the lingual gyrus tract. Um, let's just pretend that we're making a cuneus tract lesion. The cuneus is going to be more superior, the lingual gyrus is going to be more inferior. This is actually going to trip up um, a lot of people, myself included initially. So we've got light that's going to be coming into both eyes. I'm going to hit all four fields this time. And uh, we see that we have a cuneus tract lesion. So how is that going to present? Well, for these, um, I'm going to divide them up into quadrants now. If we have a cuneus tract lesion, what we're going to see is, I actually wrote that wrong, we're going to see a lower homo homonymous quadrant opia. So lower, meaning that our lower fields can be affected. Since it was a right-sided lesion, our left side is going to be blind. And homo, meaning it's going to be on the same side within each eye, quadrant, meaning it's going to be separated into quadrants. So how did we get there? Well, let's back up a little. Uh, you're going to have a cuneus and a lingual tract on both the left and the right side. So left side, right side. Our left side's okay in this example. Our right side is going to have the lesion. So, um, I like to think of this as opposites. Since we have the right-sided lesion, the patient's going to present with blindness on their left side. Since the cuneus tract is superior to the lingual tract, if you have a lesion to the superior tract, using the rule of opposites, you're going to have blindness, blindness in the bottom quadrant. So you're going to have left-sided bottom blindness, but you see that you have superior the cuneus and right-sided lesion. Next, another lesion that can I'll still use blue is a lesion of the lingual gyrus on the right side. So for this one, I'm going to quadrant it up again because when you have a lesion in the nerve, it's going to be the whole eye. When you have a lesion somewhere below the nerve, uh, but before the lateral geniculate nucleus, you're going to have uh, hemianopia. And then finally, when you have a lesion down here, you're going to have quadrant apia. So uh, now we have a lingual gyrus on the right side lesion. Using the rule of opposites, um, we know that it's going to be a left sided blindness. Using the rule of opposites, since we have a lesion on the bottom part, it's going to be a top sided uh, blindness. So that is how a patient with upper homonymous quadrant apia will present. All right, and finally, one more thing that we can look at since we're down here and the lesions are already drawn, this is gonna be a lesion to both the cuneus and the lingual gyrus. So what it can present with, we combine these two to, and I'm just gonna get rid of that stuff on top. If we combine the two of them, since we have a cuneus and a lingual gyrus lesion, it would actually be uh, pretty much halfway blindness. So it's gonna be hemianopia, meaning that you can't see out of the same eye, it's going to be uh, homonymous, meaning the same side of each eye. It's going to be um, on the left side, so we name it left, hemi left homonymous hemianopsia with macular sparing. With macular sparing, we're actually going to see a small little crater cut out, and we're actually going to see what the macula sees. It's just the peripheral vision. Uh, that's the only little nuance um, to a both cuneus and lingual gyrus lesion. You're still going to actually see the macula um, in the middle. So these cover the major different lesions of the eye. Um, again, you could have a multiple sclerosis lesion or demyelination of the nerve. So you can't uh, get information, sensory information from the optic nerve and that's going to be the full eye blindness. You can have optic chiasm lesions. So you could have a lateral one caused by an inferior cerebral artery infarct, so an ICA infarct. You could have a pituitary tumor that grows in since your pituitary gland. It's going to be located there. It could have a tumor impede upon your middle portion of the optic chiasm. You could have the tract lesions. You could have a lateral geniculate le nucleus lesion um, in multiple forms. Just remember the rule of opposites once you reach down here. Um, and then finally combine. Just remember the little nuance of macular sparing uh, with a combined lesion down there.